In this video series, I am going to attempt to build a Tesla coil. This is the first video, and today I am going to be winding the secondary of the coil and maybe testing out some very simple circuits to drive it. This was actually my first Tesla coil. I built it like last year, and it's just barely capable of even producing an arc. And I think that I've outgrown it, and I really want to build another one. I found this PVC pipe in the shed and figured it would be perfect. Then I built a little stand to make it a little easier to wind the coil and started the labor intensive task of winding the secondary. The wire is so thin and you have to be so careful to make sure it doesn't overlap. And I, I had a lot of overlaps, but I could not have been prepared for what happened next. Disaster is struck. We um, thought well, I mean, I thought I had way more wire than we actually did. So this is nowhere near how much I thought I would get. I thought I would get like up to here, but this is nowhere near that. So I guess I'll just actually cut the rest of this coil off because I can make another Tesla coil, but this could be like my test Tesla coil before I actually make the real thing just to make sure that what I'm doing is working. Okay, here's the test coil. I'm gonna solder some wires to it and test it with a Slayer Exciter. Here we have it. Um, it's pretty simple. This circuit only uses two components. And I'll explain it in this animation here. Just a little disclaimer, this explanation is going to be really oversimplified. So if you want a good explanation, I'll send a link in the description. Armed with that knowledge, here's the explanation. We have a primary coil and a secondary coil. The first thing that happens is the pull-up resistor activates the transistor, which causes current to flow in the primary, which induces current in the secondary in the opposite direction. The transistor picks up on this, and eventually, when the voltage becomes enough to pull down the transistor again, it deactivates the coil which, again, the changing magnetic field induces the opposite current in the transformer, which then pulls up the transistor again, which causes it to flip, which pulls down the transistor, and it keeps on oscillating like that. Now, the rate at which this oscillation happens depends on two factors, the inductance of the secondary and the capacitance. These two things make an LC oscillator, which I won't get into, but that's how it's able to resonate. And this little circuit is able to make this thing resonate at its resonant frequency, which is how Tesla coils are so powerful, by resonating at its resonant frequency. Okay, now that you know the very, very, very minimum basics kind of of how one of these coils works, I am going to try running it. One sec, I need to get this. Light. So first I'm going to try at a 3 volts, see if I get anything. Nothing at 3 volts, okay. Maybe just barely something. I'll step up the voltage to 5. Let's see. Oh wow! Look at that! That's pretty cool actually. And just barely an output, nothing, like barely anything though. So it's definitely working. Let's slowly crank it up. Whoa. Oh, oh. Oh, I should really stop it. Ah! It's definitely working. Okay. That's great. I want to see if I can do some fancy stuff to the Slayer Exciter and make it capable of doing a little bit more stuff. Right now the Tesla coil's output is continuous, meaning that that cycle of the Tesla coil turning on and off is never interrupted. This is really damaging on the MOSFETs, but it has these really nice powerful arcs. So I'm going to add some electronics to make it interrupted. I made this little loop of wire here, and I'm hoping that it'll be able to de detect the AC magnetic field coming off of this transformer, and it'll be able to see the resonant frequency. But I'm not sure if it'll work, so I'll just bring it close to there. And actually, it is working, so that's a pretty good sign. 
you can see the frequency right there, but I'm not totally sure if that's accurate. So I'll just hope that it is. Right here, I built a little circuit with this 555 timer that adjusts the duty cycle of a square wave without changing the frequency. If you don't know what that means, it's basically the same thing as one of those light dimmers you have in your house. But that means that I can dim the Tesla coil. Right here I have this fluorescent bulb, and there's no light coming off of it, but as I turn this knob, it'll progressively start glowing brighter and brighter. I've effectively <laughs> dimmed this thing, but you know, there's a cool thing. Do you hear that? You can hear it on the output. It's an audible frequency, which I can't change, sadly. And my mom called it the world's tiniest fart, so I'm not sure if that's a good thing. Now I've added the second 555 timer circuit. This one creates an adjustable frequency with a constant duty cycle of around 50%. Now, this is where it starts to get interesting. When you have two knobs, there's a lots of combinations you can make. You hear that? I'm just going to move this so you can watch the output. I'll turn off this light. You know what? I need to make it darker. Oops. Now imagine if we step up that voltage to say 120 volts, even higher maybe, and added some more powerful driving circuits. That would be pretty cool, wouldn't it? Well, that was kind of a pretty bad transition to my next video. But in the next video, I am going to be building a powerful driver PCB, which I'm naming the KB SSTC, because, you know, solid state Tesla coil, Kipley built it. And hopefully I will be able to produce some pretty decent arcs and I'll be able to make them safe to touch because my old one, you know, this guy over here, this one burned your finger so bad and like I have named this thing Stinky Finger among my friends because <laughs> when you burn your finger it smells so bad. So, you know, in the next, this one will Make stinky finger, I hope. <laughs> Bye.